and then we're going to have a test over. So, let's go and do, I believe we're doing section 5.4. Okay, so we have a section on proofs. We had the divisibility tests. We had a section on primes versus composites. This is following the same line. More about primes. Okay. Okay, so one of the key takeaways from today's class is this procedure for testing whether a given number is a prime. Okay, we're going to use the stuff that we've already discussed in this chapter, uh, like the divisibility tests, and, and work that out. We'll talk about something called the sieve of Eratosthenes and I'm going to leave this blank. We'll fill that in at the end of class. We'll go back and fill that in. Okay. Let's start in the middle. Okay. The sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay. So uh, what is a sieve? There's an old expression, uh, you might say, oh, that, that thing leaks like a sieve. Like a filter about Okay, right. Yeah, so um, uh, I guess we don't really call this like a spaghetti strainer, we don't call it a sieve, but I guess you could usually call it a colander, but that's a kind of sieve. Okay, so you have your pasta, you boil the pasta in the water. Once it's cooked, you want to get the pasta out of the water, so you want to keep the pasta but get rid of the water. So you dump the whole thing into the, a sieve, the water goes away, and you keep the pasta. Okay? So the sieve of Eratosthenes is for finding primes. It's a procedure that we do to a list of numbers to figure out the primes in that list. Okay? So the ones that aren't primes go away, like the water goes away when we pour the pasta into the colander, and we keep the stuff we want. We keep the prompt. Eratosthenes is a person's name, as you can probably guess by the pronunciation, Greek. Um, interesting little fact, boy. He was one of the first people to come up with an accurate estimate for the circumference of the Earth. Uh, so, Okay, so here's the sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a grid. Uh, for us, we'll do the numbers 1 to 100. We'll, fill, we'll find all the primes from 1 to 100. Okay, so I want you to make a list looking like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, give me just a little more space. I want the I want the row to contain ten numbers. Okay, so the first row will list out one through ten, and then we'll go eleven to twenty. Okay, I wanted to stop in the middle because I was bored, but I did it. I got them all written out. Okay, so I got this ten by ten list. Numbers up to 100, okay? Now, let's talk about how to actually apply the sieve of Eratosthenes to this list. Now, you don't, it doesn't have to be just the list of numbers from 1 to 100. It could, you could do 1 to 1,000 if you uh, had the patience, okay? So, now, we're going to cross this off. 1 is not a prompt, okay? So that goes away. I just put it in there to make the list. All right, now we know 2 is a prompt, so we circle that. Okay, now cross off all multiples of 2 from this list. 
Okay? None of the multiples of 2 can be a prime. We're trying to find primes. Okay, so these all go away. Now it's pretty easy to cross off multiples of 2 that are in every other column. number that isn't crossed off. That's going to be the next prime. Okay, so 3 is the next prime. Now cross off all multiples of 3. Now some of them you've already crossed off. 6 is already done. Okay, but 9 wasn't. Okay, 12 is done. 15, 18, 21 goes. 24 is already done. 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, uh, 41, 42, 45, 48, 51 is divisible by 3, so it's 54, 57, 60, 63, 66, 9, 72, 75, 78, 81 is a multiple of 3, so it's 84, 87 is gone. 90 is already done, 93, 96, and 99. Okay. So, we go to the next number that isn't crossed out. Circle that. Okay, 5 is a prime. Now cross off all multiples of 5 that aren't already crossed off. Okay, now this column is already done. The rest of the multiples of 5 are pretty easy to find. Where are they? They're right in this 5 column, okay? So anything that hasn't been crossed off in this column already, you cross it off. Okay, now go to the next thing that isn't crossed off. We should be 7. Circle that. And now what are we going to do? Right. All multiples of 7, cross all those off. Okay, 14 is already gone. 21 we got. 28 was done. 35, 42, 49, that's new. Okay, that survived, but that's going to go away right now. What's the next one? <coughs> 56, we already hit that. 63 is done. 70 is out. 77 needs to go. 84 is already crossed off. Uh, 84 plus 7 gets us to 91. So that should go. And then 98. Okay, so what next? 11. Okay, next is 11. All right. Now, uh, I think all the multiples of 11 should be crossed off. Uh, they're pretty easy to find because they're on this diagonal right here. Okay? So the list was 1 to 100. We really only have to cross off up to 10 to figure out, um, figure out where the primes are, because square root of 100 is 10. That's going to factor into this prime testing. It tells us how far up we have to check. OK, now there's still some stuff that isn't crossed off. OK, so circle everything that isn't crossed off. OK, so we got. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. Okay, now we could go cross off the multiples of 13, but it, as it turns out, it's already done. 26, 39, 52, 65, 78, and 91 are all multiples of 13, but they were already crossed out. Okay, so we don't have to worry about doing that anymore. Okay, so 13 is a prime. 17, 19 are primes. Uh, come on. 23 is a prime. 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61. 67, 71, 73, 79, 
83, 89, 97. Okay, so it turns out those are all primes. Okay. So that's a list of primes up to 100. I certainly don't expect you to memorize it. Okay, what I want you to remember is the procedure used in the sieve of Eratosthenes. And what was the procedure again? How does it go? <coughs> okay, right, so you find, you, well you start with two and you cross off all the multiples of two. Then you, every time you do it, you go to the next number that isn't crossed out. And then you cross out all the multiples of that number. Okay, so what we're doing is we're crossing out all the composites with this procedure. And the things that are left are the primes. Okay, so we're getting rid of some stuff that we don't want and keeping the stuff that we do. Okay, so that's a list of primes up to 100. Another procedure that I would like you to uh, remember. Okay. So let's do an example. We'll start with an example. Okay. So the question we're going to ask is. Is 179 a prime? Okay, so that's the question. Now, of course, it's not something that would have even shown up on our list because our list only goes up to 100, the one that we did from the sieve of Eratosthenes. <coughs> now, it would be pretty inefficient to make the list that goes to 200 and then do that and see if 179 survives. Okay? I mean, I think it took us at least five minutes to do this. So it would probably take at least 10, maybe even 15 minutes to do the list that goes to 200. Okay, so that's not a great way to do this. Here's the, here's the way to do it. We're going to check for factors. Okay, now here are the factors I'm going to check. Okay, these are the factors I'm going to look at. So, I'm going to check. Is it divisible by 2? And we can see right away the answer. What's the answer? Mm -hmm. No, right? We look at the last digit. The last digit is odd. So, it's not divisible by 2. We have divisibility tests, in other words, for these things. We are not doing long division. Okay? We need to know how to do long division, of course. But... Don't do long division unless you absolutely have to do a long division, okay? Okay, so 2 is out. Is it divisible by 3? How can we, okay, and how are you checking? Okay, add up those digits, 1 plus 7 plus 9. That is 16, and 3 does not divide 16. Okay, now why aren't I checking to see whether 4 is a factor? Because if 2 can't, 4 can't. Right. We've kind of already checked it. We saw that 2 doesn't go into this number. So 4 can't go into this number. If a number is divisible by 4, the number has to be even. Okay? So basically what I'm checking on my list is I'm checking primes. Because, well, you might say, well, why isn't 6 on the list? Well, we checked 2 and 3. If the number is divisible by 6, then it would have to be divisible by these two. Okay? So, uh, we see 5 is not, uh, not going to be a factor. Why not? Right. The only way a number can be divisible by 5 is it has to end in a 5 or a 0. Okay? Okay, now we don't have a divisibility test for 7. We have one for 11. But let's think about the 7, okay? We don't have a divisibility test for that, so we could do a long division um, if we needed to. So if you want to, 
do your long division, see what that is. Me, I'm going to look at this, okay? I'm looking at 179 in this way. Okay, now, is that part divisible by 7? Yeah, how do we know? Right, because 14 is divisible by 7. This is 14 times 10. Okay? Now remember that little kind of factoid that we brought up at the beginning of this entire chapter. We had, okay, we had a little, uh, a little proof using the distributive rule saying if two numbers were divisible by whatever you want, in this case 7, if two numbers were divisible by 7, then their sum is divisible by 7. Right? Now I have one number that's divisible by 7. So now the question as to whether the sum is divisible all boils down to this. If this is divisible by 7, then the sum is. Does 7 go into this evenly? No. Right? 7 times 5 is 35. And I think that's as close as you can get without going over. There's a remainder of 4. So this is good. That's no. So 7 is off my list. Okay. How about 11? What's my test? Okay, we do that alternating sum business. So I do 1 minus 7 plus 9. Looks like I get a 3. So what's the conclusion? Oh, no, I don't get a 3. That's not true. Uh, no, I do get a 3. I was right. Never mind. I, I don't know why I convinced myself that was wrong. Okay, so I get a 3. What was the conclusion again? Does 11 divide 179 evenly? No, it does not. Okay, this number that we get has to be divisible by 11. Okay, how about 13? Does 13 go into this? We don't have a test. Okay, so you'll have to do the long division here. Okay. Uh, I don't know, is there any clever way to look at it? Well, 13 times 13 is 169. Okay, so that's close to a multiple of 13, and I guess actually that uh, kind of tells us the answer, right? Because if we do 13 times 13, we get 169, So, and this is 10 more than 169, so 13 does not divide, okay? Now I claim that we can stop right here, okay? So my claim is that 179 is a prime number. Now the question becomes, how do we know when to stop? Okay. Well, here's the rule for your prime test. We check primes up to whatever this is, square root of 179. Okay, if you remember last class, we were talking about factoring numbers. We saw factors always came in pairs. If you had a small factor, then you had to have a big factor that was a pair to that small factor, a, a partner, if you will. So if you're going to have a big factor, then it's going to be partnered with a small factor. So if you don't have a factor by the time you hit this, then you're not going to find it. Now you might say, okay, but I don't know what the square root of 179 is. Me neither. Okay, but I do know these things. I know what 13 squared is. What's that again? Gracie told us a few minutes ago. 13 squared is 169. What's 14 squared? 196. Okay, 179 is between these two squares. 
Okay, so the square root of 179 is between 13 and 14. Okay, because 13 squared gets me to 169. This squared, I don't know what that is, but I know if I, if I were to square this, I get 179. And if I square this, I get 196. Okay? So, you don't need to know the square roots of all these things. You just need to know where they fall in our sequence of squares that we remembered from before. Okay? So, since there was no prime up to 13, that divided into 179, we can conclude 179 is a prime. Let's do a couple more examples of finding primes. <clears throat> Is 163 a prime? Okay, so how far up do I have to check? And why? What number should I check? Okay, so uh, Check to 15, okay, but our list should only include primes, okay? So when you start making your list, you can always start with that. 2, 3, 5, 7, should I check 11, or is that too big? Should I check 17? I know 17 is a prime because we saw it on the sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay, how do I know when I should stop? Look at the square root. Square root of 163. Give me some bounds on the square root of 163. And we know our squares, right? What's 12 squared? 144. 144. What's 13 squared? 169. Okay, so this is between 12 and 13. So I don't actually need to check 13. I need to check up to the square root. 13 is bigger. I should check 11, because that's a possibility. 11 is less. So I should check primes that are less than the square root of 163. our divisibility tests. Okay, so try your divisibility tests on this number. If you find something that, that where it checks out, where it works, then you found a factor and your answer to the question is, of, is this a prime, would be no. If none of these things work, then we haven't found any factors, so we have a prime. So, divisible by 2? No. No. It ends in a 3. Divisible by 3? No. no. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 3 is 10. 3 does not go into 10, so 3 does not go into 163. This is out, because it's got to end in a 0 or a 5. We could do a similar trick to what we did here. It's a little bit different, because it's not 140 plus 39. It's 140 plus 23. 
140 is divisible by 7, 23 is not, so the sum is not, so that's half. How about 11? What what what'd you get for your total? Okay, 2. Uh, you can do the signs either order. If you did 1 minus 6 plus 3, that's minus 2, but it's the, it's the same conclusion. Okay. So, uh, so none of those work as factors. So our answer would be yes, 163 is a prime. Okay, so think about our next quiz. What am I going to ask you to do on the next quiz? Okay, right, do a prime test. Okay, so what I'm expecting you to do is list out the numbers that you're going to need to check. Make a list of primes up to the square root. You're going to have to estimate the square root by remembering your square. Okay, so this is going to be a small, smallish three-digit number. Remember your square is at least up to 16 to do this prime test. Okay, so make sure you read through section 5.3 and 5.4 if you haven't already started. Okay, 5.3 and 5.4. And work on the homework sets. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the homework set for 5.3, of course, is on uh, page 121. Okay, page 121, I'd like you to pay attention to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. And then page 124, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Okay, so let's finish up on uh, Monday. Thank you.